Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to 311 Griffin's YouTube channel. And I'm practicing taking off and landing on the aircraft carrier with this uh, SU-33. And um, this is a really fun plane to, to fly, but I've been having a lot of bad luck with uh, trying to take off from this carrier. It doesn't seem quite long enough, and I wish I had a cat launch. But uh, it, plus this is, I guess, just a heavier plane than the SU-27, which makes sense. I mean, it's uh, it's a different variant of the SU-27, but it is heavier because it's built for aircraft carrier usage. Uh, it can carry a little bit more. and uh, has folding wings and a tail hook, and I'm, I'm guessing more rugged landing gear and things like that. I don't really know, but um, I've had mixed results taken off from a carrier, so I've been trying to experiment and figure out exactly how I'm able to take off from an aircraft carrier consistently um, because the the methods that I've been using don't seem to work consistently. Uh, a couple weeks ago I took off with full fuel and no weapons and didn't seem to have too much trouble. If I put any weapons on the aircraft I um, would not be able to take off. Uh, so then this one that you just saw I had my sort of multi-roll uh, loadout which is uh, four rocket pods, I think four Fab 500s, and uh, I can't tell in the video here. I think I think it's two or f no four R73s. So uh, anyway, a, a decent multi-role layout, and I was able to take off. And then I tried it again. Oh, and that's uh, something like 54% fuel. I'm at 90 90% uh, max weight. Okay, so I'm, uh, and, and I was able to take off just fine. Um, but then later I wasn't able to. So this video is about uh, what I tried, different things I tried, and how I consistently got to take off just to try to help you guys. Now, we're not going to be talking about my landings <laughs> until I can get better at them. Um, so my front wheel was just about hanging off the front of the carrier on that one, and my my uh, left wheel, my left main gear was about to ride off the side of it. So that was a terrible landing. I think I caught the last wire. Uh, we're not going to be talking about landings too much. And uh, another tip, don't hold your brakes after you catch a wire. Because you'll do that. <laughs> the wire tries to drag you back and it can't. Okay, so here um, you can see I've uh, let's see I've got weapons. There's my loadout. So yeah, um, four air-to-air -air missiles, four rocket pods, and I, I think there's four bombs under there. Fab 500 should be because I usually try to put the biggest stuff on there. And then I dropped fuel until I was at 90% gross takeoff or uh, max takeoff or whatever it is. So what I'm trying to do here is run up the throttles, hold the brakes, run up the throttles gently until I. I start to move and then release the brakes and punch it. And I think I used the special afterburner mode here as well. And you can see I get pretty low. I get pretty close to the to the water. <clears throat> but um, warnings are blazing. Uh, for some reason the gear doesn't like to come up, so sometimes I have to hold the button down. <clears throat> and that one worked just fine. So what I was experimenting with was when to release the brakes. Um, and and again, I was getting mixed results. It seemed like it was um, proper to run it up gently. You know, it takes a little bit for the turbines to spool up. So run it up gently. At a point, your brakes won't hold you. And so I kind of experimented with holding the brakes while I pushed it up to afterburner. And that that's the result I was I was getting on a lot of these. But I was experimenting with trying to. Uh, continue holding the brakes until I saw the afterburner lights come on and uh, letting off of the brakes before I push the throttles up and letting off of the brakes as I push the throttles up but before I was in afterburner. And I also experimented with turning the special afterburner mode Minimum on and off, speed. which I don't even know if it's working. Minimum. It doesn't seem to have a whole lot of effect. Um, but my... Um, my speed when I hit the end of the ramp appears to be 130 kph, 140 kph. It just kind of depends. 
Um, but yeah, uh, I wasn't having a whole lot of luck. I crashed and crashed and crashed and crashed. Minimum speed. Minimum um, so what I finally did, and this seems to be consistently working, is doing everything the way I was. Ba basically, very gently run the throttles up. <clears throat> Here you can see we got the same loadout. So I'm, I'm very gently running the throttles up while I hold the brakes. As soon as I start seeing the aircraft move a little bit, not when it sucks down the front gear because of the, the thrust, but when it actually starts to move, I'll pretty quickly push throttle all the way wide open. I'll release the brakes. Uh, I'll turn on the special afterburner. I don't know that it's working again. Um, and it may need to be spooled up all the way before it does work. But then whenever I hit the end of the ramp, or before I hit the end of the ramp, I'll actually pull back more on the stick. What I was doing before was trying to let it fly somewhat neutral. So I could, in theory, gain more speed. But I need a higher angle of attack because I'm going slower. And so what's worked for me so far is just riding that stall. Like I'm, the plane's shaking. It doesn't, it doesn't want to fly, but you start picking up speed, and I get really low on a couple of these. Uh, I think I got three meters up on one of them, which was... Uh, I thought I was going to crash. But uh, anyway, that, that seems to be working. Um, and, and I did it. I wound up doing it, uh, I don't know, four or five times in a row and took off every time. And again, it gets a little sketchy, and it gets a little bit... Uh, you get pretty close to the water, and you're pulling some high angles of attack and um, uh, you know it, it seems like you're gonna crash uh, but the airplane tends to pick up speed and and you wind up being okay um, if anybody has other ways um, that, that they that or the way it's supposed to be done feel free to let me know I've looked for videos I've looked around in the forums and I can't find anything that's specifically about the process for taking off of this aircraft carrier with this aircraft and I know that some things have changed recently because we've got the uh, the updated flight model, and I think they keep making tweaks to it. I'm not for sure because I don't read the change logs, but uh, I think they've been making tweaks to it, which is good. I, you know, I'm uh, I'm very happy with it. It's fun to fly around. It's fun to uh, uh, to to go shoot stuff with, and um, and it's really fun to try to land and uh, take off from aircraft carriers. So uh, anyway. So yeah, in that last little clip you saw, I got, uh, I believe it's three meters off the water. So uh, <laughs> got pretty close to the water there. Um, I think my next lowest was like seven meters. That might be on this clip. Um, but anyway, three, three meters, uh, I think that's about as close to the water as I've ever gotten. Minimum speed. <laughs> that's pretty cool. I would like to get to where I can just take off and not get that close to the water. Feels like if you're in danger of crashing every time you take off, um, that that's a bad thing. Here's another view. I think this is another view of just the last one that I did there. So you can kind of see the external view of it and how close it gets to the water. Minimum speed. Anyway, it's fun. I did, you know, I'm gonna test this some more and uh, try quite a bit more and, until I'm sure that I can do it um, repeatably um, and and I'll uh, just keep everybody posted uh, again let me know if you know of uh, of a uh, proper way to do that and this happens to be not the best landing in the world but one of my best landings to date so um, Anyway, it's fun stuff. Thanks for watching, everybody, and uh, enjoy DCS. Happy flying. And if you haven't gotten Flaming Cliffs 3 and the SU-27 and 33, you should do so. They're pretty fun aircraft. Until next time, take care.